That extra coffee this morning really put me on edge, folks. Welcome back, and we meet here again on another episode of the Fifth Vlog. My, how time flies. This is the big number 10 entry. My, it feels like it was just yesterday that we started, and, um, of course it wasn't. It was a couple of weeks ago, but that doesn't matter. Today we are talking about farming, and, um, my, I being a farmer myself, I feel I have an additional block of legitimacy when talking about this particular subject. It being a rather broad topic, however, I have decided to split it into two parts, and we will conclude the full length of the study next week. And, uh, <clears throat> speaking of which, I have included a short study guide, which you can pick up at the rear of the vault when you leave, so that your first test in the real world doesn't end in your tragic death. So, farming. Seems simple enough. However, I would like to change the focus of the discussion just a little to zero in on how farming may have changed once society falls. For example, mass-producing wheat fields and the typical mile upon mile upon mile upon mile of corn stalks that you encounter in Iowa will have lost their relevance due to individual farming methods. In short, you will grow your own crops in your own garden on your own property, which you will defend with your own personal the pest of prevention. On to item one for the day. Let's talk about pest prevention, and note that I do not say pesticide because such options will be unavailable. So, when dealing with the hordes of micro-sized nuisances, you will need a new arsenal of modernized weaponry for the new age. I have hand-selected a few of the most efficient, methodical weapons with which to do just that. This here is, of course, the sledgehammer, and it will utterly annihilate anything it comes in contact with, provided you've given it enough momentum, and upon full execution of the swing, you manage to connect it with an object, static object, dense enough with which to halt the motion, thus neutralizing the threat caught between the two planes. <clears throat> this is an essential weapon if you are about to start a war on worms. As you may know, once the little devils find their way into, say, an apple, they are nearly impossible to eradicate without meticulously picking away at the thing until you get a firm grip on them, and even then it's like they're embedded in it. It's as if the horrible fiends would rather die and snap in two than raise the white flag of surrender. <clears throat> Speaking of which, if this particular worm you are dealing with happens to be the recipient of nuclear ra radiation, and or mutated deformities, then um, once you start pulling it out, you may realize that it does not seem to be a normal worm. It doesn't look like one, certainly not, and um, probably shouldn't even be touched. So, I say instead, wind up and smash the whole thing in one blow. Now, of course I understand that the downfall to this method is the state in which it leaves the fruit or vegetable you once wished to consume. But may I remind you that the point of this procedure is not merely to destroy the perpetrator of the crime, but instead to instill fear into the hearts of his fellow worms. Once they discover that you are willing to take out the consumable along with their peers, they might begin to note that you are indeed serious about bringing on their destruction. What should follow in that case is a mass exodus of worms from your garden at a rate that will astound you. Now, switching gears. You might be thinking to yourself, well, what if I'm not combating worms? What if I'm not using my sledgehammer on something that will basically just sit there while I wind up for the big blow? If you are at war with some sort of flying insect, for example, well, then of course this sledge will be of little use. Therefore, I say take up the handle of a second weapon of destruction, the flamethrower. Military grade, of course. If you are looking for something that will both rid your garden of pests and heat up a nice stir-fry at the same time, well then look no further. The key, of course, is to find one with a wide spray and area of effect so you can blast away to your heart's content. However, practice is still important, and remember, precision in gardening is everything. On to item two, and which is still actually um, 
a sub-item of item 1, we're still talking about pest prevention, and more specifically, defending your garden from those who would take whatever they want without asking for it. I speak, of course, of root robbers, squash snatchers, and bean thieves, the lowest of human life. These pests can easily be dealt with by building a strong barbed wire fence around your botanical enterprise. But a more primary method of defense, which I would recommend more than the barbed wire, is to surround and camouflage your garden with heaps of rubbish, the most disgusting you can find. There is no better way to combat an enemy appetite than to kill it where it stands. Now, just, just an aside, if you are confused by the word rubbish, it is merely a word used to describe something of little value or use. I mean, at least that's how we use it in the pre-post-postmodern world. In your day, you might refer to such things as apple cores, greasy paper bags, and broken glasses, assets, personal property, and or building materials. In that case, it means that you have entirely lost the very meaning of rubbish in the pre-post-postmodern sense of the word because nearly everything you collect in your daily life has somehow become useful. I shan't go into further detail on that. <clears throat> Item three, water your plants. If you don't, they will die, and in turn, so will you. Rain, however, can be a strong ally in times when it's difficult to get water to every plant you own. I would say as long as there's no standing water in your fields, you should be okay, and shouldn't have another problem with water or issue if, uh, well, is, you will have an issue if you don't have it. That's, that, it's going to be fatal. But um, that's it for part one on farming. Next week, we will discuss planting and harvesting your crops. As always, I'm Biff Bugelberg, lending you the keys to societal reconstruction, one step at a time.